Welcome to Rocks Talks. It is March 15th. Oh, and I'm a little froggy this morning. Um, it's a pure, like, early morning session uh, show today, which, hey, it's back. Love that. Today, we're going to talk about the NSYNC reunion that I did know about yesterday, but I just needed time to process as a true NSYNC fan how I felt about it before I vocalized it. And then we're also going to talk about change and how change makes you feel. We may never be too old to feel uneasy. Hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, <laughs> yesterday morning I some period of like you know the hours between waking up for Maisie and trying to get back to sleep and then waking up for again I was on the gram and I saw that my boys my men from NSYNC <coughs> that frog is serious hold on had a bit of a reunion two nights ago which the same as love is blind which I think that's very questionable anyhow um Justin Timberlake was about to go on tour, and he was having like a, he was having a uh, practice concert, however you want to call it, at the Wiltern in L.A., and as he's singing Gone, out comes NSYNC. I might have mentioned this yesterday, but not my true, my full feelings on it. And they sang part of Gone, part of Bye Bye Bye, it's going to be me, of course, because he likes his May. And they sang Girlfriend, and then they sang the new song, Paradise, that is on Justin Timberlake's album. So I sent this to m like my friends, Liz Wilcox, you might know her, um, email guru. She's also right now currently on the uh, Survivor, on Survivor, check her out. And I sent it to my sister, big and sync fans. And I was talking to my sister about it later in the day and she was I said how do you feel about it she's like I don't know I go I don't know how to feel about it either it's like I've been waiting for decades for the reunion I'm so thankful that they had a reunion but to do it in a way that only a few hundred maybe two thousand people could enjoy it small as opposed to like all of us who've been clamoring for for so long kind of sucked I'm like I don't like that I don't like that at all Why not either do it on an award show or do it even better, do it on tour, let us all know so we can get tickets and go. But to like gift that to people in a practice, I was like, Wah. and I don't feel like they made it, I don't feel like they truly appreciated it because believe it or not, there are many Justin Timberlake fans who are not fans of NSYNC, who did not do the boy band thing, who found him and discovered him after that. So they're hanging out there, and then, oh, well here's this old boy band they don't know about. I would never call them old, old, old boy band, but they probably would. When you see the videos, they're just kind of like, uh, they, they, they cheer, and then it's just cameras, but I don't feel like they were feeling it. Not enough. I needed fainting. I needed ambulances. I needed a stampede. Rochelle said I'd gone too far. <laughs> I needed more action. The other thing that irked me about it was that this morning I got up and I saw a headline. Now I don't know if this is the initial the headline because I not didn't click on the on the on it, but this is something that was put out there by some news, like some news outlets that just do the clips so you can go read the thing. And it said, Justin Timberlake reunites in sync. As a true in sync fan, that is like the most or it, Justin Timberlake brings together or reunites. I got to find it. If that is like the most fingernails on a chalkboard way of describing this. Because if you know the history of NSYNC, and if you know the history of their breakup, Justin, or their pause, whatever you want to call it, Justin, and if you know how much they wanted to get together but had to wait for freaking Justin because they wanted all, they felt like they need to honor all... Like, it's annoying that, oh, Justin did it? Are you kidding? Lance Bass has been lobbying for this for decades, okay? And on his podcast, he's always talking about it. Let me see the exact words because it did annoy me. I might lose them, and that's probably... Yeah, Justin Timberlake Green Knights in sync at a warm-up concert. No, he didn't. 
And sync has been waiting. What annoys me is, and this is in the relationships as well too, the person who cares the least is in charge, has the most control in in a relationship. Justin Timberlake, not the best member of it in sync. Yes, the most famous. And if you count success as monetarily, yes, but not the best. Cared the least about the band. And so he had the control as to when the band got back together. And conveniently get back together for his stuff. That is annoying. I am annoyed. I'm glad they can all be friends. I'm glad they can all hug it out. I am not hugging. <laughs> I am annoyed. <sighs> okay. So the art of being seen, which is really funny because my dog is now at my leg wanting to be seen. Hello. Your timing is impeccable, Miss Maisie. I'm wondering why you're wet, but we'll figure that out later. Um, she wanted to be seen. We are not we are never too old to be seen and we're never too old to feel uncomfortable. We're never too old to second guess our decisions. You could be a mother of grown ass kids and you still go through all of those feelings. The things you would tell them not to have, you're still going to go through them. I am a very intuitive person. I am. I'm very empathetic as well too. And as I was driving home from the gym, I was like, I need to call my friend. And I know she wouldn't mind me saying, telling you the story, saying her name even, because she was talking about it on her TikTok live last night. But um, my friend Deborah, she is making a major move in life after living almost all of her life in, uh, in Florida. I'm talking, you know, four or five decades at she is now moving across country to Oklahoma to start a brand new life. And I just, I knew the day w- she was going to be leaving yesterday. I'm like, I just, it's something I got up. I really was like, I need to call her. And I called her and lo and behold, she was literally like, had just stopped at like a rest stop and was freaking out. She's like, I'm having a panic attack. I'm wondering, am I making the right decision? What am I doing? And I had an opportunity just to remind her that A, it's okay to feel that way. But B, in our moments where we're like we're like right on the precipice of greatness or on the edge of glory, as um, Lady Gaga would say, those are those moments when literally Satan or whatever you want to call him will do everything in his power to make you second guess yourself, make you doubt yourself, make you think you're you're. you're on the wrong path will derail you because you found the door to the fastest path to the thing you want to get to. So he's going to want to make you go left, right, up, back down or whatever to, to go a longer route where you may never get there. I would think you'll get there eventually, but it's going to take more time. That is what he does. And so whenever I feel that, whenever I'm in a day that's gray, when you're stuck in a day that's gray and lonely, you do have to pick up your, your chin and grin and say the sun will come out. But also realize that is a sign, which means you push forward. You keep going. You go past that thing. Scott and I have been watching a lot of things. I think because we're watching Dynasty, which is tonight, two more episodes, um, the show on Apple TV about the Patriots. And you see the greatness, truly, of Tom Brady. Um, and you see, and we've been, we were even looking at some things about The Rock lately. And you think about, yes, they're talented, but uh, there are a lot of talented people. Come on now. You think about, they didn't start out and everyone's like, you're the best. No one said, Tom Brady, you're the GOAT. He had a lot, believe it or not, even before he got to the Patriots, he had a lot of opposition. He had a lot of, could have, he was like ten, the 10th round uh, or he was the 10th string quarterback at Michigan. 10th string. And worked his way up to being first string. And then yet still the coach was like, eh, this is fifth year. Um, the coach was like, yeah, actually, I like Drew Henson better. My point is, he could have quit. He could have stopped. He could have been like, Ugh. he didn't. He powered through. All of those moments where he could have been like, forget this, he didn't. And he became the GOAT. 
why can't I, why can't you become the goat where you are? Or why can't we just remember when things look like they are not going our way or we're not going, you know, it's not going to work out a couple things. A, we need to remember we, our body, love our body, love our mind, likes to keep us safe, which means it's going to throw out anything possible to make you not do something that's out of your comfort zone. Moving at any age is out of your comfort zone. It is. It's going to do anything in its power to do, to make you think, no, I need to stay small. Aren't you tired of staying small? I'm tired of staying small. I am not small. I am tired of playing small. And I hope that you are too. If there's something you're meant to do, do the dang thing. How much more time are we willing to waste? Seriously. How much more time? Do we, what we think we're going to be the oldest woman in the world? We know something no one else knows? No. So seize this moment and do the thing you really want to do and keep pushing at it. I've been angry this week because I'm like, I want this so bad and I want it faster. And I've had those moments where I'm like, uh, should I just, just throw it all away? No. Keep going. Keep swimming, Dory. And remember who you are. And also remember that everything is a puzzle. Everything is a puzzle. You have to find the piece. You just have to figure it out. But it's figure outable. You got this. We need to feel seen. And we need to realize. And where am I going with the seen part? The fact that I knew to call Deborah. That was a moment where she was able to feel seen and heard and keep driving that U-Haul <laughs> trailer. Keep on keeping on. Little things can make us all feel seen. I encourage you to take a moment today and help people feel seen because that scene could make them feel like, okay, I can do this a little bit longer. I can do this a little bit longer. There was, I haven't fully watched it, I s but I saw that Regina King, actress, Oscar winning actress, I remember her from 227, that was a long time ago. She was on Good Morning America talking to Robin Roberts about her son, the passing of her son, um, death by suicide, I believe. And um, because it was in the middle of the morning, I didn't have my headphones. I was just like looking at it and reading about it. But what I did was I read the comments and there were a lot of women in there that were like, that it meant so much that she's like, she said she's the mother of her son and she's proud to be the mother of her son. But I guess she must've said something about, he was just tired of talking. He was tired. And people in the comments were like, I feel that. I'm really tired of talking. I And I just was reading this. I'm like, there are people out there that just need to feel seen and understood. Not judged, just seen and understood. And that's all of us. When I say there's people, that's all of us. Doesn't matter how old we are. I was doing a, a TikTok live. TikTok live. I'm on every day, by the way. P.S. and by the way. So um, follow me on TikTok Rocks Talk Show and you'll be able to get an alert when I go live. I was on doing one two days ago and there was someone who came in to watch. You know, you, you don't know everyone. I actually rarely know everyone. There's thousands of people who come, who come through your TikTok lives. And I think it was a he was, was very much like I responded to what he wrote. And he was like, oh my gosh, thank you for responding. I really feel like that makes me feel special that you even responded. And it's that personal touch. It's like when I was doing home shopping, there were people on there that were came to shop and there were people on there that came for companionship and would, would write in or would text in and, um, and we'd be able to respond to them. And that meant the world to them because they might have had a day where they were being judged or they weren't seen. Being seen can go a long way. I just feel like I need to share that message with y'all. All right. It is my birthday weekend. I turned 45 on 
if y'all wondering why, I'm like, oh, the dog is, Maisie is climbing high. I turned 45 on St. Patty's Day. And with my 45th year of life, man, I hope it's a great one. I really do. I'm ready for greatness. I'm tired of being small. So I'm ready to blow up in all the good ways, not in the body size. (laughs) I'm ready for my message and my influence to go even further, to just catapult. That is what I'm ready for. All the good things, all the work. And I hope that for you too, if that's what you want. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, and y'all, I have new subscribers. I'm going to start next week shouting out the new subscribers and saying thank you so much. Um, Yeah, I need to do that. And I'll do the ones from this week. Uh, But new subscribers, thank you. Thank you for your comments. We still don't know where Kate Middleton is, but I'm sure there'll be more drama soon. Um, I appreciate you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe and go be great. Bye, everybody.